Hello everyone. Today's episode is called Mastery is Simple. And before I begin, I would like to share a quote by Albert Einstein. And I was not there to really see this man, to truly tell you who I really saw. <clears throat> However, I will show you and I will share with you this quote by him. The definition of genius is taking the complex and making it simple. And to continue with the title being Mastery is Simple, I want to simply communicate, guys, that we have had people in this reality, people who have walked in this earth, which had which were very advanced, not just in their learning, but in their function in life. And so it's as if they had a certain mastery. Think of the great martial artists or Ipma, you know? <laughs> think, of, think of the dexterity of every person who, in a sense, has raised and elevated man's skill. <clears throat> mastery is simple. Because you will see that when you are confronted with a complex problem, if you do not choose to allow yourself to see it simply, you will be lost in confronting with that complex problem as if you're trying to fight fire with fire. It's not, it's not really working for you. It's just burning more stuff. So we want to burn less stuff. And in, in this whole understanding, see that it is our ability to see the most complex aspects of life and ourselves in the most simplest ways that really gives us our clarity because clarity is simple. The mystic, the yogi, the, uh, even the pilot of consciousness, they, they, you understand this. You understand that uh, if you are confused of your reality, it is only in its more simpler uh, understanding which you, you will really be freed because you're certain, for example. In other words, the life that you've lived in your past, there are moments of your past where you're like, I'm sure I was there, I was there, right? So there's a sense of certainty. You need to see that if you are in a reality where you don't have that sense of certainty, you need to go to your self-awareness and explore life in a manner where you're walking in reality where you know where you are. Because if you work with a reality you're uncertain of, you will be lost in your confusion. It will be the observer effect all over again in a way where you're not really even being aware of the observer. Because man thinks he's the observer. No. Similar to how that electron is kept by man's sight. Uh, what is man being kept by? And is it that when man doesn't look, suddenly it changes? Could it be that what is keeping man, just like that electron, in, in ways of it looking different, we are shifted. And so these ideas are complex because they have a mystical uh, ending which they're pointing towards. But to be honest, we're not seeking for stories, but more the clarity of the experience which then is interpreted into a story. Because if you have the value first of the story as if your experience is coming from a story, it will never be real for you because you don't know the storyteller. But the experience is the storyteller. So you being aware as an experiencer, similar to how <clears throat> Muji, a very wise man has said, think of two birds sitting on a branch. One bird is fixing, doing all this stuff, preparing food and whatnot, you know, <clears throat> probably ruining the day of some worms, you know, and there's one who's just simply observing the, the, bird, the other bird. And you see that there's an aspect of you observing you ever since you were originated into existence. Now that observance is not formed. So if you think you're still physical, that means that you are choosing to see a reality that is bound by that limitation. The sight of man has huge significance when it's his sight that is shifting his reality. Because where is the value of quantum physics if we ignore the humanity? Because machines are no longer machines uh, when man does not exist in that realm. So man must understand that it is his definitions that are steering the wheel of where culture is heading. So how you are utilizing language is suggesting how you are communicating in this life and whether it's helpful or not. Because even a blue jay knows that the branch that it's on is not the only branch it can be on. And it, it, it's trust in its wings, it flies into other realities. And so the trust in your wings has nothing to do with the branch. 
So your navigation in uh, your awareness of your multidimensional sense of existence and more eternal sense of existence is not from this reality, is not from this branch of knowledge, form, shape, identification, and in a sense solidification. But I am telling you, we can be very smart because we're very intelligent creatures, of course. You know? <laughs> So we can see that we can discover the essence of all existence within our present moment. And when we do, the clarity that comes is you stepping into your next action. So you see, it's as if like there's one dimension of knowing that you are on the couch and you're like, yeah, okay. Then suddenly something happens like an emergency and there's an aspect of your knowing that just stands up and runs and just pushes aside all the irrelevant realities because you know where the greater values are, right? <clears throat> So similarly, it will raise to a point where you will see that don't acknowledge your energy as shaped or working with a specific reality, but see that you are this formless inspiration. You are like this plant that's not convinced because it's still growing in the light of, of a new dawn. So do not be so convinced by a self to then have your attention limited to that self as it fluctuates and is thrown into the chaotic movements that are keeping this ordered world uh, transforming <clears throat> and in a sense transcendent it's the chaotic nature of the foundation of the greatest structures that tells them that when that structure shakes when the, uh, the apocalypses come very playfully and our world is torn we're like yes we know it is but we're also standing in greater planes and so we observe the shift in dimensions and shift in reality by having already observed ourselves and so the individual is walking into the, in the light and in the knowing of his collective, his collective consciousness. What that means is that your, all your unique associations, all your ideas which are trying to rationalize truth for you, when they are observed in one moment of being, you will see the word in front of human does not just have to be human and you could be any being because conception is playful in its design. And so the leaders of man will see that they are not leaders of man. They are students of life always exploring and learning and being greater expressions of existential allowance. Because once you can do a good action, you have, you have the possibility of doing it and so there is no need of analysis. Even the consideration that we are a mind that's always analyzing is creating a reality that is getting tired of what it's doing. And so we are not satisfied when man's uh, cultural teachings are trying to give solid answers to, in a sense, liquid questions. And you will see that the liquid questions don't need answers, they simply need your involvement in your action, in your awareness to self, to then, you, you will see you will be your greatest movement. And you always are and have been. There's, it, it's a very elegant way where you see it, it's as if like a toroidal field. There's many aspects of, um, you're spiraling in many ways in your reality. And so you are constantly in self-remembrance. And self-remembrance, as it becomes the remembrance of a plane of existence present within a greater I, you will see that the reason this reality can be even transformed and you can move to other dimensions is simply because you are seeing how fragile this dimension is in a greater absorption and awareness of life. So as you transition into your greater knowing, you will see that your inspiration, the energy that is within you, has elevated to a point where you're no longer thinking, you're just action, your movement. Every morning you cannot wait for the next day to be alive and to give the greatest speech that has the simplicity of the breath. to all existence. In other words, you, you giving and providing your next most able expression and being allowed and being its observance. So imagine at some point you can have some existential sensitivity to your subtle realms where you see it's not like it's in another dimension where there are aliens and stuff in, you know? It's simply that the way you're observing this reality, you are doing it so mindfully as if like you're not just mindful of the Zen master's teacup, but also of how you are aware of yourself. And in that awareness, you will see it is the light of your greater sense of view, which you will see 
that higher selves never needed to be shaped in hierarchy. They were present there the instant you knew that you knew. And so mastery is simple. Because the complexity dissolves the minute you are awake, the minute you see that your inspiration is not from external reality because you internally there's a vastness that is moving you. And so man may feel that he's the border between two worlds and so when these two worlds expand he feels uh, uh, confrontations of many apocalypses are coming. There was this one guy and I thought people who drove Harley Davidson's were very badass there was this man in India who, uh, they, he was said to have, to have uh, survived through, I think it was 7,500 apocalypses, this man had just gone through as a being, right? And I was like, whoa, what was he driving? <laughs> so you can see, guys, that the scale of your reality and how real it is for you is really your inspiration. If you're in a room and it's not real for you that it's your house, you don't have the comfort to move like it's your own house. But consider this, that if your own house was never the building you were raised in, but was actually your moment. In other words, you are no longer seeking temples because your temple has become the instant awareness to how you are present in this life. And so it's the present moment is the greatest sanctuary. It is the greatest temple where you dissolve and in a sense open the celestial door to being the collective consciousness that always, in a sense, sparked your view. Because collective consciousness is not something that is only done with one dimension. So in other words, your awareness of physical reality right now is like, for example, you um, understanding like the first chapters of your book. The other chapters are simply your engagement and activation. And in other words, your, your movement in regards to your conscious view and how much you trust that which is unconscious and how much you are willing to, in a sense, let the veil dissolve into the fire of a greater knowing. Because simplicity is observant and is deep. Because simplicity is simply standing there and complexity is rising. And so I've used the metaphor of a race where there are two people. And these two people, one of them is, is, is standing at the end, end line, at the, at, is standing at the big start line. And the other one is also standing at the start line, but when suddenly the sh fire is the shot, the shot is heard and the, the race has begun, the one of the people suddenly begins running towards the end as fast as he can. And so you see, if these two people had the same mind in the thought experience that I'm talking about right now, you would see that one aspect of you is watching you from your silence, and one aspect of you is watching you from your noise, and they are not separated, because how could both of your eyes be separated when there is one mind? And so simplicity is the man who is at the start of the finish, at the start of the line, and complexity is simply how the marathon runner is running in intensity. So there's an aspect of your presence through a multidimensional acknowledgement from your plane, from the physical plane, that you will see that it's as if like you're observing in the most simplest way your most complex actions. So for example, as a writer, you're writing the most, co like the most complex stuff you've ever written that you are even surprised by the inspiration that could move you or the, the, the thoughts that were just lying dormant in your mind, but the minute you woke up, they began working. Similar to how a CEO just, when he walks, people begin moving in the company. And so the projection and the project moves forward. So <laughs> project management is important both in business and in existential observance. So really have the clarity and see that mastery is simple because there are various intensities. And even, even Ipman, there are many martial artists recognize that there are movements in the body where the body has a, has a one state of being, being very free and suddenly being very intense. Or as Bruce Lee said, do you like water, my friend? Because he, Bruce Lee understood that water could crash or it could also flow freely and in a sense move between the rocks and the hardships and the sufferings of life as, as a direction of greater being. Let your personality seek your inspiration to the depths of its sight. 
and only on the edge of your consideration do you see the ability to let go of all that you know to be within a greater knowing of all that you are <laughs> And the intensities in life suggest how reality and the nature of life is moving. And so you're never depressed about one thing, but it's as if there's a coagulation of ideas, imagery, and reality in your consideration in which your spotlight is moving. It's as if there's a table and with a lot of stuff on it, and someone's just moving the light over the stuff. So the stuff is really not you, it's just simply the imagery that is in your mind. It's as if an aspect of your mind is like, all right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm recording these here. You get a little bit of conscious view of it, you know? Sometimes and so you're, rain, you're in a sense, seeing it uh, in a way where it's not complete. So man is recognizing that his vision is not complete, but at the same time, it's also not incomplete because it's all, always moving towards greater view. So there's evolution, there's an expansion. There is a movement towards this dimension. It's as if this dimension is not just an, an artwork on the wall, but it's actually a very intense movie which you're watching with 3D glasses. <laughs> Mastery is simple. Self-observance, self-remembrance, self-awareness, knowing thyself, it's very simple. Observe the most complex by recognizing and trying to see where they are emanating from or where the, where the simple truths are. Because once you observe the simple truth, you can see that you are filtering the ideas that are irrational. Because sometimes rational people make irrational mistakes and it's because of a lack of mindfulness to the awareness of imagery that is flowing in their uh, internal observance. So you need to find Mr. Within to see that you are going within a greater understanding of how your existential intelligence is working. And so when I say your work works with you, you will see that the greater intelligences of life are flowing through you. And so it's, it would be as if you thought you were suffering and dying, but simply the blue jay just flew off that branch and began observing a vastness, a sense of a formless presence that inspired him to walk gracefully, simply, and with an intuition that could never be touched by a spectrum of duality. So you will see that the greatest actions of man are ones that are selfless. In other words, for example, Christ's crucifixion, the powerful symbol of man being God, or in a sense that of communication and that relationship. So we see that the profoundity of man's mind comes from his acknowledgement of reality. And his greatest acknowledgement of reality comes from self. And so in that understanding of the imagery that you're considering to be you, you will then have the clarity to be beyond it. Mastery is simple because beyond mastery, there is simply being, it's nature. So it's as if the student began with an, creating his own illusion and that, that at the end of it he realized, wow, my greatest skills in this physical life are ones where I'm actually not thinking too much about, I'm just doing it in a flow of very blissful appreciation and gratefulness of mine. Krishnamurti said, I am compassion with its own intelligence and the Dalai Lama breathes compassion. So in seeing that, see that the intelligence of compassion is a huge existential permission of multidimensional learning. So you will see that by incorporating a compassionate attitude, your mind becomes integrative because you're allowing your value not to be fixed. You're saying, okay, I give others for I see others as I see myself. And so man's psychology is simply tuned to a better understanding. When you see how ideology and terminology was used in our past, it's as if when man was trying to figure it out, the concepts that carried forth were ones that were pointing towards eternity. And so that is why poetry has always uh, been the, a beautiful existential mirror, because in its madness, 
it shows you how gracefully you're walking in this life. And so ancient poetry is very beautiful, sacred hymns. I recommend many people to go and look up the poetry of Rumi, Hafiz, Attar, Khalil Gibran, Sadi, and many other great people get dissolved in poetry because poetry gives you an awareness of uh, more of your collective intelligence. So because it is in a sense shaking your ideas a bit. And so it is your allowance that really shows how much you can allow the greatest skill and in other words rationalized ability of the master to be simply done by nature's flow. And I would like to leave you with the imagery of that martial arts master, that very old guy who was very graceful in the park when suddenly a gang of hooligans appeared and he just, in his simplicity, uh, it's as if he was dancing internally, but outside he was just like, he was like, you know, in a sense, breaking arms, both psychologically and, <laughs> and uh, physically, so. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that once you really allow yourself to to a very integrative and transcendent and in a sense clear and neutral view, observe life, you see that the simplicity of the moment is really holding the complex. So by being in your simplicity, you have a greater knowing. And so you see that you never needed to race yourself to think that you were only one uh, form of being. In other words, it's more better to see what is keeping that form there and it is the existential attention and awareness that you are. So awareness is keeping form here. Because when you sleep at night, I think your, our worlds are shut down for a little bit, consciously. <laughs> so you, 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 you see this and the study of the nature of your humanity is the most important study. So study how you are a being here. Study your nature of mind and also have your unique approaches into explaining who you are. So don't just sit down and be like, okay, this is the only way that it makes sense. Of course, okay, let's say you figured out the only way that things was and this is life. After you get bored and you're like, could it work this way? So in other words, if once you find the peak of knowledge at the end, you want to wonder, if, is there more knowledge? I mean, did I really find it? Is this it? Is this it? Would you, would you be convinced if you had the truth in your hands and you would see no because you're seeking for greater reach? A different reach. And I tell you, and I'm telling, Mr. Within is telling you, don't reach through thought. Put thought down. And as if you have just put your coat aside and you're just simply walking towards a more comfortable space and as you do there is no need to carry weight and thought form is weight because it requires more of your concentration to keep it there so you can see that once you are playful with your intelligence you are giving it the existential permission of being integratively found so it's as if all life begins playing with it and the cosmos begins seeing that you're such a joyful being why not let's see what happens with more gifts you know <laughs> it's a very beautiful and uh, very deep method of understanding because in a world where people are hating one another they are forgetting the game they are forgetting that physicality is only one aspect and so love how you are. But also understand that vision requires a confrontation of all forms. And perhaps then when questions have suddenly gone silent because you've recognized who you are. You shall look at life as life. And Mr. Within will also be there. <laughs> so you have found Mr. Within when you are no longer lost in conception. Mastery 
the simple and you shall see that you are simply not the idea of a master but the ability of a greater expression within this reality and existence. Dance and discover. For it is only you who can give yourself the gift of who you really are. Much blessings and namaste.